Hi you guys, thanks for stopping by. I wanted to take a moment right now and remind you to watch and check out my GMC DIY playlist. I've got tons of repair videos for your GMC Yukon Denali, all-wheel drive, 6.0 engine. These same repairs can be applied to Suburbans, Tahoes, and Escalades. If you would like to check out these videos, Click above on the right hand corner, it'll take you there. As you watch these videos, you'll see it doesn't take very many tools and it doesn't take a lot of experience or technical skills, which in turn is gonna save you a lot of money. Speaking about playlists, check out my other playlists and see other ways that I can show you how to save money. But before you do any of that, remember to like and subscribe, so that way you can see my newest videos that come up. And don't forget to hit that bell. Believe it or not, this really helps my channel. By the way, if you like the closed caption translated, just look on the lower right hand corner there and pick your language that you like for it to be translated to. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Well, today I'm going to be taking off my fender off my 2005 Yukon Denali XL. You're probably wondering why I'm taking it off. Uh, my deductible is $500. Some people have a $1,000 deductible. And the fender itself you can find for about $100 to $150. And it doesn't require a lot of tools. And I could, I could do this myself. So if you want to learn how to do that, watch this video. One more thing before we get started on this project is that I want to mention that don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell and please comment on the bottom and uh, to enter in this giveaway that I'm doing, I'm going to be giving away a battery powered ratchet. It's not this one, it'll be this one here. It doesn't come with the battery but you can find them on eBay and the charger. So don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment but also your comment when you're done with your comment put the word ratchet on there and that way I know you watch the video. Anyway, let's get to work. Okay, before we get started, we're going to be taking off a lot of bolts to remove this fender. So you're going to want to organize yourself. And here's one good way that was taught to me. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to get 12 Ziploc bags. Why 12? Because it's going to be 12 steps to take this fender off. Then take a permanent marker and number each bag. 1 through 12. Now if you look on the lower left hand corner you're going to see a number. As we progress in the video you're going to see these numbers change 1 through 12. So number 1 means this is the first step. Any screws, bolts, or washers you remove you're going to put it in the bag. Once the step is done close the bag and set it aside. Then you're going to grab bag number two. Then you're going to start on step two. And again, any screws, bolts, or nuts you take off, you're going to put it in the bag. Once you're done with the step, you close the bag and move on to the next step and so on. You want to avoid putting bolts in a tray like this one. In this job, you're going to have a lot of bolts and nuts and you're not going to know where they went. So using this method is going to save you a lot of time and frustration. It's a trick that I learned from an old mechanic. Now you can use boxes, you can use a bunch of different bowls, but you can pick up Ziploc bags really cheap for a buck at a dollar store. When you're done, keep the bags because you can use it on your next project. Okay, here's the driver's side fender. As you can see, I've got, you know, the dent here. I've had a couple of those mobile body shop guys look at it and quoted me 300 bucks, but I would have to buy the paint. So once you add all that up, it can be anywhere from $400 to $500. So again, I found that it was cheaper to replace the fender myself. My new fender doesn't have this rocker panel, so on my next video, I'll show you how we're going to replace that. Once I take this fender off, I'm going to take off this rocker panel and install it. I got this from a private party. Someone bought a Yukon and started taking parts apart and selling it. I picked this one up for $100. Bucks. One of the things you want to do before you start this project is look at the fender that you bought and look at all the holes that are back there and try to determine which are the holes that you're going to be working with. Now I know there's a lot of screw holes here, but don't get intimidated. There's only a few bolts that bolt on this fender onto the body, so don't be intimidated. 
So if you don't have the fender, I'll just leave this up here for a little bit so you can study it and look at it. Mine came with the spring for the hood, so that's going to be a plus for me. Now, if you're a better person than I am, why don't you go ahead and wash the backside of this fender. Maybe even spray some oil on the backside to help reduce rust. See this square hole here? Part of the grill gets attached here with a clip. This is one of the last things you're going to disengage to take the fender off. You're going to disengage that clip by hand. So remember that square. All right, let's get to work. Okay, number one, we're going to remove the hood. Now, if you're doing this by yourself, you can use a pole to hold your hood up. And once you remove the screws in the back, your hood's going to want to slide towards your windshield. So you want to protect your windshield. As you can see, I got rags there. This pole, by the way, goes all the way down to the ground. That way, it doesn't accidentally get knocked over. You're going to use a 10 millimeter socket. And you're going to want to disconnect this cord. Okay, number two. You're going to remove all three of these bolts. They're 13 millimeters. We're going to remove the three bolts that hold the hood up. Unless you decide to take your whole hood off, then it's six bolts. Just so happens I had a neighbor come over and help me take off my hood. Make sure you have a blanket on the ground. That way you can lay your hood on it so nothing gets scratched. Okay, number three, we're going to remove the headlight. Just move the levers to the side and pull up as shown. Once you have both of them pulled out, go ahead and unplug the plugs that are in the back. If you want to know more about how removing your headlight in detail, go ahead and click above on the right hand corner. It'll take you to my video. Okay, number four. All these bolts are 13 millimeters. You're going to remove these two here. We're also going to remove these four screws to remove this curved bracket. Once that's done, remove the screws all along the top of the fender. Those are 13 millimeters also. Don't forget the ones right behind the hood hinge. There's two more back there. You'll see one though that's 10 millimeters. The bar over the battery is a 10 millimeter. Just take the one bolt off. Okay, we're ready for step number five. First, we're gonna remove the battery. After that, we're gonna remove the battery tray. This is real simple to do. This is gonna take a 516 socket or a 516 speed wrench or a battery wrench is what I'm using. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for about three or four bucks. You can go ahead and just move that bar out of the way so you can pull the battery up. 
Once you remove the cables, go ahead and pull your battery out and set it aside. Now you're going to take your 13 millimeter socket and you're going to remove your battery tray. There's going to be seven screws you're going to remove. You'll see them when you look down there. They're not hard to miss. You'll see that there's five screws on the bottom and two on the side. Now if your battery tray is really corroded, you can pick these up at a parts store brand new for anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks. If not, just clean yours, repaint it, and reinstall it when you're done. Inspect this battery tray area once you have it removed. You may want to clean it with some rust preventative and repaint it with some rust-oleum to help prevent getting any rust in the near future. But if you want, you can do this later if you want. Okay, we're at step number six. Now we're going to unbolt the fuse box from the fender. Now I know this is going to look a little intimidating, but it really isn't. All you're going to do is remove two or three bolts under this box to disengage it from the fender. You're not going to mess with any electrical. You're not going to unplug anything. All you're going to do is just be moving some stuff around. That's it. But if your neighbors or your wife or girlfriend come by and see you doing this, they're going to think you're a mad scientist. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is remove the lid. On the side of your fuse box, you're going to notice this plug. Just go ahead and disengage it from the box. Next, on the back side of this box, you're going to see two little tabs. Just pull on the bottom back side of this plastic fuse cover to unsnap them. You'll see the red arrows here where the clips are at. Just unclip it and pull upward, as shown. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you're looking down into a fire-breathing dragon. Trust me, you're not. You're worried about unplugging something incorrect or shorting something out. Remember, we disconnected the battery, so there's no possible way you're gonna short anything out. And we're not gonna mess with the electrical at all. So get back over here, don't run away. I want you to picture a box, and the box has a lid on it. That's essentially what you're looking at, a box with a lid on it, sort of like a Tupperware box with a lid on it, except that this lid has a bunch of fuses on top. All we're gonna do is unsnap a couple of areas to remove the lid. Now there's three areas we're gonna unsnap and the lid is gonna pop off. Once you've done that, you'll be able to raise the lid. But it just so happens the previous owner had did this before and I noticed there's a couple of screws in these areas. So you may have to remove a couple of screws also. Remove those screws first, then you'll be able to unsnap the lid and move it off to the side. After you remove the screws, here are the clips. Okay, here's the clip on the left side. And here's the clip on the right side. And you've got one long plastic clip back here too. You can see I'm unclipping it and then I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to lift one side of the lid and move it towards the engine out of the way. I'm just giving myself enough room to get to the bottom. There's two screws on the bottom underneath this lid. All right, this is what the underside of that lid looks like. It looks like the head of Methuselah. Anyway, down here, there's two screws. You'll see them. There's one on the left and there's one right under these wires here. Now, there's a third screw that I took out. It's underneath this box here. You can unclip it and you'll see it. I didn't video it, but it's really easy to get to. You'll see it. Just remove all three screws.
Okay, we're at number seven. This is an easy one. You're gonna see all these lines that are clipped onto the fender. Just locate all the clips and just unclip them. If you don't unclip them, when you take off your fender, you're gonna be pulling all the hoses and possibly break them. You don't need any special tools for this. All you need to do is just use your fingers to unclip the clips. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to step eight. We're gonna put a block on your back tire so it doesn't roll. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pop off this plastic cover with a screwdriver. Before we jack up the car, I'm gonna break the lug nuts loose. You can use the wrench that's given to you in your spare tire kit, or you can use a star. I just happen to have a half inch impact. You can find these for about 70 to 80 bucks used. If you got a little spare cash, they make these with a battery. Those run anywhere from 200 to 350 bucks. Okay, here, all you're doing is breaking them loose. You're not taking them off. You're just loosening up the lug nuts. Now we're ready to jack up the car. Make sure you're putting your jack under the body frame. Don't put it anywhere else but here. As a safety precaution, put another jack stand underneath it in case something happens to the jack, it doesn't fall on you. It's just one of those safe things you should do. Once it's jacked up, go ahead and take off the lug nuts and remove your tire. Now we're on step nine. We're going to remove the inside plastic wheel wheel. And how you're gonna do that, you're gonna remove these plastic clips. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see how these clips come out. It's really easy. All you gotta do is take out the center portion. and then the base portion will pop out. If you have one of these door panel tools, it'll be very easy. I believe there's six or eight of these. Either way, take them all out. The only thing you have to be concerned about is this little clip here, just unclip it. Once you've removed all the plastic clips, you can now remove your plastic wheel well. Step 10. Towards the front of the fender, inside there, there's another 13 millimeter bolt. You're gonna need a short 13 millimeter socket to get in there. Go ahead and remove the bolt. Once you have that removed, look on top of the wheel well area there. You'll see two more bolts. Go ahead and unscrew these two bolts. Okay, it looks like we're done on the inside. Now we're on step number 11. If you look down at the bottom of the fender underneath, there's one 13 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that one. Now let's open the door. There's two 13 millimeter bolts in there. You're gonna need a long extension for this one. You're gonna remove the very top bolt. Here, where the red arrow's at. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, the bottom bolt, you're gonna remove that one, where that arrow's at. Remove the two bolts. Now that you remove those two bolts, we're ready to remove the fender. Can you believe it? Okay, we're on number 12. Now, as you start to wiggle the fender to remove it, you're gonna notice it gets hung up in the front. Do you remember that square hole I showed you in the beginning? There's a clip that the grill is clipped onto into the fender. You're gonna to wanna to unclip that before you remove the fender. Otherwise, you might break the grill. Once you've unclipped that grill, now you can maneuver the fender and now you can remove it. All right, we got the fender off and we're halfway done. Putting it together is gonna to be faster because now you know what you're doing. It'll be a lot easier because you put all the bolts in a numbered bag. So as I show you how to put it back together, you're gonna to reverse the process, meaning that you're gonna look at the number on the lower left-hand corner and each bag of bolts that you numbered corresponds to that lower number. Makes it a lot easier to find the bolts for each part of the process that you're doing. 
Remember to like and subscribe, so that way you can see my newest videos that come up. And don't forget to hit that bell. Okay, let's get the replacement fender and put it back together. So it would be step number 12. Be sure to snap this clip that's on your grill into the fender first before you position the fender. It'll be a lot easier when you install it. Okay, we're on step 11. And we're gonna put the two screws in here where the door jam is at. Once you've got that done, we're going to go outside on the bottom of the fender and screw in the bolt underneath. We're on step 10. We're going to screw in the 13 millimeter bolt in front of the fender. Once you're done with that, you're going to go up on the wheel well and screw those two bolts in. Now we're on step nine, and we're gonna install the wheel well. Line your wheel well up. Make sure you snap it in the clip up in front. And align the holes, and go ahead and put in all the plastic clips. Step number eight. We're gonna go ahead and install our tire. Once you have the tire in, go ahead and put the lug nuts on. Tighten the lug nuts as best you can. Once you have your lug nuts tight, go ahead and lower your jack. Now come back and torque your lug nuts down to 140 pounds. Once that's done, Put your cover cap back on. And remove the jack. And your jack stand. You can also, if you want to, remove the block. Now we're on step seven. This is real easy. All we're gonna do is snap in the plastic lines into those clips. Now we're on step six. We're going to install the three bolts that go on the bottom of the fuse box. Once you have the bolts in, go ahead and snap in your lid to your fuse box. Make sure you have all three snaps in place. Now go ahead and put in your plastic fuse box cover. Go ahead and snap in this plug here on the side of the cover. And last, snap in your fuse box lid. Number five, this is an easy one. We're gonna install the battery mounting plate. It's gonna take seven screws.
Now let's get the battery and install the cables to the battery. Remember, positive to positive, negative to negative. Okay, we're almost done. We're on number four. We're going to install all the bolts that are on the top edge of the fender. And we're going to install this curved bracket. Number three, we're going to plug in the headlight and install it. Okay, number two, we're going to install the hood. I got my neighbor to come over and give me a hand with my hood. Once you have it up there, go ahead and, and screw in the three screws that go on each side of your hood spring. And lastly, number one, we're going to go ahead and screw this cable in and we're all done. All right, it looks like we're all done. Please check out my next video and I'll show you how to remove and replace and install this rocker panel. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was very informative. Please check out my other how-to videos. Oh, and check out my new website. There's new items being put in there every day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, hit the bell. Until then, we'll see you at my next video. Bye.